we will move on then. And it's uh, the next topic in the Jeff Jarrett My World podcast was August 4th, 1918. You and Austin Idol defeated Jerry Jarrett and Tojo Yamamoto to win the CWA tag team titles at the Mid-South Coliseum. Uh-huh. Memories of this time period uh, in your career. And do you know what? I'll, I'll go straight to it. We've never talked about Tojo Yamamoto before. So uh, mm-hmm. some stories about Tojo. Well, he's a legend. He was a legend, and he was – I remember him when I was a kid. He was P.Y. – not P.Y. He was – No, that was, was, that was uh, Phil Hickerson, wasn't it? He that was, was Phil G. Hickerson. I can't I – I don't know. His name wasn't Tojo. It was something else. But – and he was a short guy, very, very sneaky. He had great timing. But that uh, – that match there with uh, with Tojo, uh, I mean, I, when I first broke in, let me go here. Uh, P.Y. Oh. Chung. Yeah, P.Y., yeah. yeah. So he was very sadistic. He beat the living shit out of me when I first started. And remember that old saying, be nice to the people on your way up, I think because you're going to meet those same people on your way down. Well, this was Tojo's case, because I remember Tojo blistering me, like in my chest, and he would throw those blistering chops. They hurt. They burnt. They really did. And I was just starting. Probably I thought if I would just drill him with a punch, I might stop it. But in stopping it, I'd probably get fired. <clears throat> so you got to weigh the, the end result of any action that you're going to do. So I remember when I went back to Memphis and this was in my early, about three or four years before I, I did the deal with Jared, uh, Jerry and, uh, and, and, and Tojo, but I found me a bull whip. I said, Oh, oh and brother, I made, uh, I made him regret, he may not have known why he was what he was regretting, but I would light his ass up like a Roman candle with that bullwhip every chance I got. Because he didn't wear any shoes, so you, if you just threw it around his feet and popped it, oh, it hurts like hell. So, <clears throat> and at that time, after I started throwing that bullwhip, he became very, very nice to me and very easy. So. But anyway, that was that's the that's the way of wrestling because you know if you mistreat somebody on the way up, you know when you're coming down, they might be on the way up or they may be already there and they'll pay you back. Was it Tojo who had the toothpick as a weapon? I don't think so. Am I going crazy? Oh, you've been crazy. But... Okay, well, we'll presume I'm crazy then. Do, I, do you... I, I, I don't think he had a toothpick. I don't remember that. Okay, uh, with. Uh, Tojo, do you remember when he turned good guy eventually after so many years of terrorizing the good guys? That was before I got there. But he was over. He was over as a as a heel, as a bad guy. And he was over as a baby face. I think he went to Jerry Jarrett's rescue. Uh, oh, two more heels were beating him up. And, you know, the friend of my friend, uh, the friend of my enemy is my friend. Or how's that say the the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Yes. That's that's the way it goes. So and it works in wrestling. Because when Tojo saved Jerry, no matter what, you know, angle that Jerry and Tojo had going on before, now he was Jerry's friend. So and it worked. <laughs> it drew a ton and ton of money in Memphis. Memphis was probably the greatest wrestling town uh, of all time in the wrestling business because they had that big mid South Coliseum that they ran there. They had big channel five TV distribution. So all you had to do is put a good card in there and you had half a house almost falling, falling out of bed. 